brought to you by my fridge, a guest star in this uh, episode of uh, Max's Midweek's Amusements, on account that I didn't realize that it was in the background of my recording until I got done recording. So, uh, yeah. Sorry, guys. I suppose, uh, to finally pass on all my, uh, character uh, for Dungeons and Dragons, I'd make a slideshow, an explanation as to, uh, what my thought process was for them. So, uh, I hope you enjoy. Some of these, uh, drawings I never finished due to, um, losing attention to them. Pleased to see you again, friend. Have a seat. I'll get you some tea. You're always welcome in Max's Roost. Today I'll be covering the evolution of Townsend to Malvina Croden and Luna. Townsend, as you all may have seen in my previous videos, was a hybrid of a raven and a human. And in though, in though I enjoyed developing her while in high school, um, making some comics here and there, I soon found her story to be very lackluster. I feel like I just didn't do good enough with writing her. I sat and looked at her hybrid design, wondering what I could do with it after graduating, ever so often making her more and more horrible looking, because I just find that very entertaining, you know, uh, making monsters. Uh, but I still didn't have any clear direction with where I wanted to take her. She was a detective, from what I remember. Um, not a very good one, because I never made any comics with her um, being a detective. Um, and I believe she also spread the plague, because I remember I gave her a plague doctor mask to start off, and I'm like, oh yeah, it would totally be so uh, cool and badass if my character just made everyone sick all the time. So yeah, that's fun. Um, she was a flop. I was inspired heavily by Bloodborne when I made her, but uh, I was too afraid to really embrace the qualities the game's creatures and characters had. Um, that is, until I joined my first Dungeons & Dragons group. I won't go into depth. Um, I won't go too in-depth, sorry. Um, because I don't know if my friends really want to be Put out there too much, um, but uh, my dungeon master was quite accepting of my ideas for my character. Uh, before I even came up with a name, because I knew I want to get rid of that and make someone new, um, I didn't even know how to play the character even. I told him I wanted a person who transforms into this horrible raven that I've already figured out, I've already drawn them, I, I know what they do. Um, and I, I wanted to, uh, you know, work with a lycanthropy kind of idea. Um, delving more deep into the Bloodborne aspect of things. I remember I specifically told him, if I do lycanthropy in Dungeons & Dragons, I want to uh, make a character who doesn't have control over that lycanthropy. Because I don't think that... Um, a animalistic form of a person and a person are the same thing. I, I, I almost had the idea that they were two different things at this point. They, they're two different entities. Um, that they're just cursed to share a form. Um, almost locked away. Almost like a Jekyll and Hyde situation, I suppose. Um, but yeah, getting back on topic. Uh, we spent about a month Figuring out um, where we would go, getting things fleshed out with this character, now called Malvina Croden. Uh, looking back on it, uh, the name Croden was very on the nose. Like, too um, on the nose. And if I could go back, I'd probably change it, but, you know, I it's gotta, it's, we'll get there, we'll get there. Um, she had black sclera, 
and bright icy blue eyes. They were meant to look like the eyes of a jackdaw, which is a different corvid. Um, they like to follow ships and stuff. Um, she also wears leather, well she wore leather armor uh, studded with small fish designs in metal instead of studded kind of buttons. Um, initially from the backstory she had assisted a small village, a fishing village, and they just gave her this armor as thanks. This is before she even had armor. Um, because I feel like anything in your inventory should have some reason for being there. Did the characters already own this? Was this a hand-me-down? Was this a gift? I feel like going into that sort of uh, detail about even just the mundane parts of your inventory in D&D, um, I think that that is a fantastic thing to do because it gives your character so much life, you know? Uh, my hands are waving around all sorts of this place. I'm bumping into my desk. Sorry if you guys can hear it. Anyways, she also had uh, deep black hair with silver streaks in this. Um, mildly edgy, not gonna lie. I'd probably go back and change that if I could. But initially when I made her, I thought it was the most badass thing in the world. But it was also because she was a half elf. Her father has silver hair, her sister has silver hair, and her mother has black hair. Um, canonically, her father uh, got with someone else and her sister is full elf and she is just half elf. So kind of sad that though her sister is currently younger than her, she's probably going to outlive Malvina herself. Fun times, fun times indeed. Geez, even her father would probably outlive her. Anyways, that's the, you know, depressing age restrictions in D&D &D aside. I guess not restrictions, but more so rule sets. You know, some things just live for fucking ever. Um, anyways, I attributed um, half-elves to be a very hybridized, you know, race. Um, like, if you took a lion and a tiger and you joined them, you'd get a liger. But also that liger has a bunch of fucking diseases and stuff because it's not supposed to happen in nature. And that was Malvina. She was a scrawny fucking string bean. Um, but that also made her a great dexterous fighter. She was efficient um, with finesse weapons. Uh, efficient? I think that's the word, but I might be wrong because I haven't played D&D in a bit now myself. Um, and she also was a blood hunter because I thought, okay, blood hunters already have lycanthropy. It'd be a lot easier to figure that out than um, give her like a different class with lycanthropy because that'd be confusing and it would it would it would hurt my brain. I'm not ready for that. Anyways, so uh, combat wise, uh, she would often not see all the actions she could take in a fight. She was very new to fighting. Um, even at level 12, she was like just starting to get into the ropes of things, you know? When she started out, she didn't have any combat experience prior. Um, that is also a great excuse for me not knowing a lot of D&D &D rules and me still not knowing a lot of D&D &D rules. Um, but also, uh, she was a very loud person when it came to right and wrong. Um, in fact, she would often condemn villains right in front of their faces, um, or even demand them to desist their current um, tasks and goals. Um, they didn't like that. She got beat up a lot. Uh, actually, she got backhanded by a dragon once. That was, that was great. <clears throat> um... So yeah, it would lead to a lot of drama in the, in the sessions. Um, but hey, who does like a little bit of soap opera, right? Um, and I think that's, that's... I think we all enjoyed the Dungeons & Dragons session because of how much drama had happened in it. It's great, you know. Work, life, it, it, it's, it's just hard in general. It's nice to put uh, our characters through a little bit of torment. Uh, 
so that we can like, oh, look, they get back up on their feet after this. We can do it too. And uh, yeah, I was a bit hard on my character. <laughs> In any case, um, I couldn't say much more about her, really. Um, I'll probably share more characters if I make them in the future. I haven't been able to really play any characters for a while, so I I have characters I've made, but I, I don't want to say anything about them until I start playing it, so I don't spoil them if I do ever play them, you feel me? Because um, I don't know if my friends watch these videos. But, um, yeah, this one had many flaws with both my writing and how I played her, but uh, I think she always holds a special place in my heart and mind. Uh, I relate to her a lot. She's not so bad. Um, but with that, if you enjoyed this video, if you did, uh, please like or subscribe to see more. I'd like to have you in Max's Roost more often. Um, if you disliked, as always, please tell me why you disliked in the comments. I value constructive criticism, and I'd like to know how to build my channel to be better in the future. So, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a good one.